Silver. It is Monday, June 3rd. I just want to say a quick hello to any new viewers and an awesome welcome back must also go to all returning viewers. If you did tune in last time and decided to come back, I really do appreciate it. You can actually find me on Ravelry as SilverLuna2112, at SilverStreet on Instagram, and at Silver's Knitting on Twitter. Anyway, how have you all been? I've been good. I do notice that I have a lot to talk to you about, so I should probably get started, right? So grab your drink of choice, your knitting and crafting, and away we go. So today I'm actually just going to be drinking some water to kind of keep everything going. So I'm just going to take a quick drink and we will get started. So let's move on to my favorite things. This week has been a lot of uh, family stuff going on, but I did manage to get something in the mail. So let's talk about that. I ended up getting a shipment from Jimmy Bean's Wool. Uh, I did get a size US 7 uh, Chaigu 60 inch circulars for a project that I'm working on. I'll actually talk to you about that later. Let's move on quickly to FOs. Uh, yes, I did manage to finish something this week. It is what I called ITA blanket. This got me 2,300 yards. The pattern I used on this one was Grandma's Dishcloth by PJ Allen. I actually kept increasing until I got to about 200 stitches and then I started decreasing. And I ended up using a few different colors. Um, I ended up using Bernat Baby Sport in the pale blue colorway, the Baby Ombre colorway, mint, yellow, and baby pink. Because I love all those colors together, right? Doesn't that look cute? And I ended up using a size US 7, which is a 4.5 millimeter marble circs. So what this project means is that now I do have a total of 6,128.8 yards or about 5,604.17 meters, which is pretty good. It's actually better than I thought I would be two weeks in, right? <laughs> Let's move on to works in progress. I have managed to start a couple projects this past week. The first one I called I Can Do the Can Can, Can You? or it's also known affectionately as my June 2019 DVD socks. And I am using Desert Vista Dye Works, uh, the Viso base in the Moulin Rouge colorway. Hence the Can Can reference, if you're wondering. I am using a size US1, which is a 2.25 millimeter and nine inch circulars for most of the sock, I believe. And then when I get to the heel, I'll switch over to 16 inch circulars. And I am actually housing this in my stained glass Beauty and the Beast bag by Molly Klein Designs. The second thing that I did manage to start this time around was what I called SSDGM and F Politeness. And it is a My Favorite Murder reference because I am using the My Favorite Murder Mystery Wrap pattern by CC Almond for this one. I love the way it's, it's working up. I finished Clue 1 on one side and I am about nine rows into the second one so i'm doing pretty good the next clue does come out on the seventh so i'm trying to finish it by then and i am using a uh, suburban stitcher sock yarn in the triflers need not apply colorway i have three skeins so what i decided to do was use one skein for side one one skein for side two and then whenever i run out of both yarns i will split the third ball for the rest of the shawl um, I am using a size US3, which is a 3.25 millimeter. I used that for the i cord cast on, which first one took me about two and a half hours, mostly because I didn't know what the heck I was doing. And then the second one took about an hour, maybe an hour and a half, but it's totally worth it, you guys. I love the way it looks with the rest of the shawl so far. But the rest of the shawl itself is knit on a size US4, which is a 3.5 millimeter. And this whole project is actually being housed in my springtime flower bag by the Fat Squirrel. Um, this is actually the bag that I managed to get as a pre-order for SSK 2018. Now, besides the two projects that I did start this time around, I did manage to put a little bit, and by a little bit, I mean a lot of love on another project that I've had on the needles for a bit. This is the Endurance Test for Quitty Match number two. The pattern I'm using on this one was the Progression Shawl by Karen Reisinger. Uh, also known as Round the Twist Podcast with Karen. I absolutely love this pattern. I've used I've used it a few times. <laughs> Let's put it that way. Um, I have decided to use this as a quidditch project because it, we are concentrating on endurance training. 
And suffice to say, using three different skeins of Miss Babs Yelza will qualify as an endurance training, right? The first colorway that I'm, I used was Across the Universe, and then this time I did manage to put in the colorway C Teal is the next colorway. And the third colorway is another very good, but I cannot remember the colorway. I will make sure I will mention that next time because I'm sure I'm going to be still working on it then. Anyway, I digress. I am using a size US 7, which is a 4.5. Um, well, I was using marble cirques, and now I'm using those Chai Goo needles because this shawl is quite frankly, big enough for it right now. <laughs> Radio Gaga. Well, in terms of music this week, I did listen to The Darkness, Permission to Land, and Stabbing Westward, Darkest Days, in preparation for the uh, podcast that I am going to be recording with NTI, hopefully, at the end of the week. We'll see. Um, we got a little bit delayed this week because, like I said, a little bit of family stuff going on. Um, anyway. In terms of podcasts, I have been listening to My Favorite Murder, The Murder Squad, Associates Anonymous. They had a um, listener special this time around. Um, suffice to say, yours truly put in a story, and I'm going to be playing that at the very end of the podcast. So if you're interested in listening to that story, um, Swoops and Giggles are pretty amazing at, at telling stories, so. Uh, let's see. Oh, yeah. Another podcast I've been listening to is The Wayward Podcast, as well as Wine and Crime, and That's Why We Drink. Oh, uh, I had a little bit of uh, catching up to do this week, you guys. I'm so sorry. Silver's Book Pile. I have managed to finish four different books this week. The first one I finished was The Fairy Tale Bride by Kelly McClamor. I also did finish Harry Potter and the Order of the Phoenix by J.K. Rowling. I decided I wanted to completely finish the book, even though I was a little bit ahead of the um, the podcast I'm listening to it for. I also finished Blood Noir by Laurel K. Hamilton. And I also finished Say Sexy and Don't Get Murdered by Georgia Hartzark and Karen Calgariff. Literally the day it came out, I was binge listening to it on Audible. I'm going to go back and read the physical book in oh, a little bit. As to what I am currently reading, I am currently reading A Breath of Snow and Ashes by Diana Gambleton. I'm hopefully going to finish this one soon. I'm also reading Mount Vernon Love Story by Mary Higgins Clark. I've also started Skin Trade by Laurel K. Hamilton, which is the next one in the Anita Blake series that I've been reading for a while. And the last book that I have been reading is a book called Stalking Jack the Ripper by Carrie Minscalo. Sorry if I'm pronouncing the name wrong. Um, this is a book that was put out by James Patterson Press and I saw that and I was like, oh, it needs, it needs, needs, needs to be read by me. So I have started. <laughs> uh, Silver and the Case of the Screen Time. I have been watching Quite a bit, you guys. Um, I've been watching a little bit of Stargate SG-1. I've been watching The Dead Files and Portals to Hell. In terms of movies, I have actually, I have actually watched all of the Lord of the Rings trilogy. Uh, so that's The Fellowship of the Ring, The Two Towers, also The Return of the King. Um, and then I watched Pride and Prejudice on Zombies because, as you do. <laughs> And then I did start watching the Harry Potter series, so I did get uh, through The Sorcerer's Stone, The Chamber of Secrets, The Prisoner of Azkaban, and the, the Goblet of Fire, and also The Order of the Phoenix as well. I think I've decided I'm going to start watching the movies as a whole series between each of the books as I'm reading them. I don't know. We'll see if that's a good idea, because I am um, listening to... Harry Potter and the Sacred Text at the same time I'm reading the books, so it's going to be a bit. We'll see how well that plan, if, or if, even if I remember that plan in a little bit, right? <laughs> yes. Sorry, guys. I am so easily distracted today. <laughs> Let's see. Okay, so besides TV and movies, I did manage to watch a few podcasts this week because um, I'm still, like I said, catching up on everything. Um... I did watch uh, Stitching the High Notes, the Geeky Girls Knit Podcast, and the Knit Girls Podcast as well. The more you know. Okay, it's time for a cow breakdown. Let us talk the great podcaster craft together. A little bit of detail. 
This is a cow that I actually am help hosting in the year 2019, so the whole year. The craft together will start on January 1st and will end on December 31st, like I mentioned. If you are a podcaster and would like to host an FO thread on your Raptory board as well, that's fine. Chatter threads are even better. Um, giving out prizes is up to your own personal preference. If you are officially participating in the along, please PM me directly. I will add you to the list of podcasts participating, um, which does include your podcast banner, and I will add you to the list of moderators if you so choose. However, if you are not a podcaster, but you do listen or watch any podcast at all and would like to go ahead and join, just please feel free to go ahead and join and make sure you spread the word. And if you would like to, you can go ahead and use hashtag the great podcaster K2TOG on Instagram and everywhere else. That way we can go ahead and just share the wealth and just share our projects when we finish them. Quick rules. You must be a member of the Cal Ravelry group, which I did title the great podcaster craft together. Just so you know, your projects must use at least 10 yards of yarn. Individual socks do count, unless, of course, that you finish the pair. Um, only one pair will be counted once. I'm so sorry, um, but that's how they, that's how it happens, right? Because socks come in pairs. Um, so you know any project that you finish in 2019 will count. Um, so you know if it's not a Ravelry craft, you can go ahead and enter it. But please just go ahead and post before and after photos so we can see your project. Um, these non-Ravelry crafts may include scrapbooking, latch hooking, quilting, sewing, needlepoint, holiday baking. Um, it could be anything as simple as cleaning up your craft room. I mean, I'll take it because, quite frankly, um, <coughs> yours truly needs to go ahead and clean hers up. But that's a story for another time. <laughs> so, just so you know, poly dipping is allowed and even encouraged. So go ahead and put in any cows that you would like to. Um, I just ask that if you go ahead and post it in our group as well, just definitely let us know what, what alongs you're also entering that project in. So that way, if we have a project, we can go ahead and enter that one as well. Now, in the case of scrappy blankets, I'm going to let you know um, one stripe or three squares or hexi puffs count as an FO in this context, because quite frankly, who isn't working on some version of a scrappy blanket or like two or three in my case, or I think I'm up to four now. I don't even remember. Okay. The prizes. I'm going to be giving away 12 $10 under patterns on Ravelry. So that's one per month. There's going to be four total copies of my Proud to Be Me shawl pattern, uh, so that's also one per quarter. There's also going to be a free pattern from Java Pearl Designs that will be given away per month, so a total of 12. There's also going to be a set of stitch markers that will be donated by Colson111322. We'll go ahead and send those directly out to you, and hopefully I'll have pictures soon. I'm also going to be giving away three skeins of yarn by Nice and Knit. Two of them are on their fingering base, which is 490 yards of 100% superwash merino. The first colorway is sand dollar. And the second colorway is what I think is deep blue sea. Um, sorry, still no na name on the label. And the last skein of yarn by Nice and Knit is on their sock weight base, which is 463 yards of 75% merino and 25% nylon. Um, again, no name on the label, but I believe it is called Mayflowers. A skein of yarn from Mad Fuzzy on her pretty tough sock base in the Season's Greetings colorway from the Spotted Circus. She did donate a worsted weight skein of her pack of CVM, which is 80% alpaca and 20% CVM wool. Oh, it's a chocolatey brown colorway. I am super jealous. Mo's Crochet is actually donating four individual skeins for her hand spun yarn. Um, one will be given away per quarter. From Adore Knits, we did get a winter themed progress keeper and stitch marker set. From Knit Picks, we do have four different set prizes that they donated. The first one will be a set with a stitch fix and connecting thread scissors. The second one will be, the, will be a tin with colored stitch markers and a yellow tape measure. The third one is going to be a purple notions clutch bag. And the fourth one is going to be a gold needle organizer. Oh, thank you guys. Thank you everyone over at Nitpicks for those donations. That's amazing. From Joanna at Stitching the High Notes, there is going to be an enamel pin and a candy cane progress keeper. From Molly Klein Designs, we will be giving away a pink gingerbread town bag. 
as well as this caramel latte yarn. Oh, gorgeous. From We Ones, we did get two sets of stitch markers. One are these cute unicorn stitch markers. And the second one is going to be the, she the Spring Sheep stitch markers. There's also going to be a grand prize that will be given away at the end of the year. Um, this grand prize package, I am jealous of whoever is going to win this. Um, in this package is going to be an Alpaca Progress Keeper from Adornments, as well as a physical copy of Interpretation 6. Uh, Jara Pearl Designs has also offered an ebook of the winner's choice as well. There will be a Mrs. Brown's bucket bag added to that as well. And like I mentioned before, Nitpicks has donated a bunch of prizes, but they also donated a set of Rainbow Wood Crochet Interchangeable Hooks or a set of Rainbow Wood Knitting Interchangeable Needles. This is going to be up to the winner's choice. If the winner does do both, both of these sets will go into that same package. So super generous, generous you guys. Oh. And the last thing that you will win as a grand prize will be a $50 Miss Babs gift card, which is actually going to be sent directly to the winner's email address once this, or this prize has been pulled for. Now, since the last time we talked, you guys, we reached 300 FOs this month. Oh my gosh. So to that end, I am actually going to add one more prize to the prize pool. I decided to highlight a specific designer about every 50 FOs or so. So I'm going to be drawing for those prizes in just a bit. Since we did get to 300 FOs this month, at least there's a lot more than that, I will be giving away a Molly Klein Designs pattern um, from her pattern store of $10 or under. So we did have a bunch of people put in FOs in the month of May. So congratulations must go to Dedor4, Elsa and M, I Now Hour, Jordadaya, Knit Central, Knitter Chow, Elle McCall, Mose Crochet, Nicole S, Original Sin, Share 2014, Trilinda, and VT Kimmy Kim. Congratulations, you guys. Oh, I loved looking at every single one of your FOs this month. Oh, you make you guys made me feel like a slacker this month. <laughs> All right, let's move on to honorable mentions. So there's a new contest that I've started at the end of January. Um, if you haven't noticed, I've actually been loving every project, uh, mostly because I cannot get enough of the awesomeness that you've been working hard to finish and, oh, and post. It's honestly just who I am. Um, I do love to share the love and to go ahead and celebrate everyone's accomplishments. If you do agree with me and would like to go ahead and start doing so, that would be awesome. However, there will be an added twist for those that do. At the end of each month this year, I will be awarding the most lovers with a pattern of their choice on Ravelry. Perhaps even the individual who got the most hearts on the project will get a little bit something extra as well. I will be announcing the winners of the honorable mentions for the month of April later on in the show. Um, the, the voting for the month of May has begun, so please be sure to visit the honorable mentions May thread on the Great podcaster craft along Ravelry Group, and make sure that you mentioned that you cast your votes for the FO entries. Entries number 252 through 334 before June 30th at 12 midnight Eastern Standard Time. Um, be aware I may be persuaded to delay closing that thread until about 12 midnight uh, Pacific Standard Time, however, depending on how late I'm awake. Okay, so what you came here for, the prize drawing. Let's, I'm going to go ahead and draw for the $10 R under pattern on Ravelry. Uh, this was pose number nine, who was Knit Central. So congratulations, Knit Central. Please go ahead and PM me directly on Ravelry. I am, again, Silver Luna 2112. Now, for the Java Pearl Designs pattern for the month. So the winner is post number 167, who is Jodadaya. Congratulations, Dodadaya. Please go ahead and PM me directly with which Java Pearl design you would like from her pattern store. As to the honorable mentions winners, I have already put up a post in the Ravelry group, but I did want to go ahead and announce the winners here on the podcast as well. If you happen to win a prize from this category, please go ahead and PM me directly on Ravelry with your choice of $10 or under patterns. 
The person who had the most loves this past month was post number 207, who was Nicole S. Congratulations, Nicole. Now, for honorable mentions in April, there were 10 different people who went ahead and voted for their favorite. That was from post number 2 through 11. The winner of the pattern on this will be number 10, who is Cher2014. So congratulations, Cher. Please go ahead and PM me directly with which $10 or under pattern you would like. Okay, so I do have a little bit of a um, little bit more in Miss Jotty to talk to you about. Uh, let's go ahead and discuss the third anniversary contest that I had. Uh, as I mentioned last episode, I did have three different prompts that I wanted you to answer. The first was looking through my episode titles, which one was your favorite and why? Because I'm always nosy that way. <laughs> and on the subject of my episode titles, number two actually has to do with your preference for how I get out the different references on each title. Um, as a lot of my episode titles have revolved on have been revolving around like movie, music, or TV references. Would you prefer that I always include where each title comes from? Uh, I can go ahead and put the answer at the end after each of the credits uh, for those that are not interested in knowing where the reference came from until then. Or would you rather I open up contests in each episode thread to see if you, my wonderful viewers, can get where the title from, came from? Or the alternative that I gave was, would you prefer I do all three? Because I can go ahead and do that. <laughs> um, the results of the poll came in. I just checked again. Um, the results are, let's see, it looks like there are three votes total. Yes, looks like there are three total votes for give us an outro explaining where the title of each episode comes from after the credits, please. So I will go ahead and I will start doing that because I kind of like doing that. <laughs> there was kind of a, quite a back, a lot of back and forth with about what everyone wanted me to do. So that was great. I loved it. Thank you for everyone to, who voted and go ahead and make their preferences known. Uh, the third prompt that I had was, what has been the FO or the item that you completed um, that you are most proud of from the past year? I am going to answer this one honestly. Um, and it's not just to be a shameless plug, but I'm most proud of my Proud to Be Me shawl design. Um, it was a collaboration that I made for the Geeky Girls Knit podcast. Um, both CC and Dami had a, um, a pretty large um, anniversary this past year as well. And I wanted to go ahead and premiere a pattern at the same time that they put that, that episode live. Um, basically, the pattern itself is simple garter stitch. It does have a little bit of eyelet tear in there and a simple, simple pattern. Every once in a while, you can play with whatever kind of yarn you want, whatever needles you want. I allowed for all of that in the pattern. Um, but here are a few of the, the um, pictures from it. Um, <laughs> I'll make sure I'll include them here. Just, I'm, like I said, I'm super proud of it. And it doesn't help that the pattern, um, that the pattern page, that picture is my sister when she was dressed up for my cousin's wedding. And she doesn't often let me take her picture with my, my knits. So thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, so yeah, I do have to thank her for that one as well. I don't think she'll ever listen to this, but anyway, um, so there was a prize for those that answered the prompt on this one, I am giving away this wonderful skein of Paintbox Yarns Sock Yarn. The color is actually called Stripes Wisteria. Oh, I love this colorway. I'm kind of jealous and I didn't want to give it away. But anyway, um, this is going to be 427 yards or 390 meters. It's uh, 100 grams or 3.53 ounces. And it is 75% wool and then 25% uh, nylon or polyamide. Okay, let us draw for the prize. The winner of this prize is post number 16, who was Nicole S. So she said uh, for prompt number one, cast all the things because that seems to be my philosophy too sometimes. Yeah, like all the time for me. <laughs> uh, prompt number two is that she'll be interested to know where the references are coming from and it doesn't matter to, to her whether it's during or after the episode. 
And honestly, she wasn't interested in investing, which was pretty much everyone's want, well, which is fine. I get it. And the FO that she was most proud of this year was her Alina socks. I honestly, I loved this pattern myself. I've already put this in my queue. <laughs> so congratulations, Nicole S. Please go ahead and just PM me directly with a physical address for you. And I will go ahead and I will send that out as soon as I possibly can. Okay, we have come to the end of the road. I am pretty social. You can find me on our Ravelry board, which is Silver's Dream Man Podcast. On Ravelry, I am Silver Luna 2112. On Facebook, Silver's Dream Man can be found at www.facebook.com backslash Silver's Dream On Instagram, I am Silver's Treats. On Twitter, I am at Silver's Knitting. Um, be aware on Instagram that I cannot see direct messages on the phone that I currently have. Um, if you have been trying to message me directly there, I am so sorry. I cannot see it at all. Um, if you don't hear from me or anything like that and you are trying to reach me directly on Instagram, please just send me an email to silverstreamled at gmail.com. I'll answer it a lot faster that way. And in the case you don't hear from me um, within 24 hours, please go ahead and just email me directly. Um, as always... Anything that I do talk about can be found in my show notes directly at www.silversdreamingpodcast.com. And I'll also be putting a little bit of the timestamps and everything down below in the description bar here on YouTube. Okay, I have rambled long enough. I know your time is valuable, so please feel free to go ahead and join in any discussion or start your own on the Silver's Dream Man Ravelry board. I don't bite, I promise. So please stay tuned for episode 73 on the 10th. Until next time, happy crafting. Episode 72's title, Heavily Capitalism and Easily Easily Distracted. Well, quite frankly, I kept looking at the squirrels outside and, yeah, easily distracted all the time. As to Heavenly Capitalism, that was a quote directly from Dammy of the Geeky Girls Knit podcast. And as promised, here is my story on Associates Anonymous. So this one comes from Nitty Silver. She says, hey, sweeps and giggles, hope all's going well. I have a bunch of crazy customer service stories. Um, as I've had too many customer service jobs in the past 20 years, there are too many um, customers to count and remember, just one story. But she does have one dumbass customer story to tell. Um, while she was working at a call center for a fruit arranging company, let's call them Edible Undies. Because <laughs> fuck them, and they're dumb, gotta lay off all call center employees in one fell sweep with no notice policy. Nope, I'm not bitter at all. <laughs> So she goes on to say, I was asked to ask to escalate a call as um, as I was the only supervisor this lady would listen to. This lady goes on to say that the orange chocolate brick that she received with her oh, chocolate covered good. strawberries. Yeah, doesn't it? Um, with her chocolate covered strawberries must be bad as it didn't taste very good. For context, we would have received her or um we would have shipments of said strawberries sent out to parts of the country where the company did not have physical stores. When we did that, we would need to add a cold pack to keep the fruit fresh on the overnight. You guessed it. The cold pack was orange. The dumb bitch had eaten part of it. No! The poor rep that I took over from the call had no idea that was what had happened. Uh, 
when I had the lady give more details and got to the crux of the problem, I had to put her on hold before I could. Oh my god! I had to put her on hold before I could lose my shit and crack up on her dumb ass because that would be rude. Suffice it to say, I had to find a nice way to say, "Ma'am, you're a dumbass. Please call poison control or get yourself to a hospital for a stomach pump." Here's the kicker. She had called. She died. Here's the kicker. She had called in the year before with the same quote unquote problem. What? Guess who had taken that call too? Yep, yours truly. Totally. <laughs> oh remembered. my god! How stupid! <laughs> Confirmed it with the order history and everything. Same bitch, different day. Oh my fucking god. Like, she's straight up the chocolate covered orange tastes bad and it's the fucking cooling. <laughs> I really, weirdly enough though, the story makes me really want a chocolate orange. Like, Oh dude, I love the one that you like crack open. Yes, it's like an actual orange. I think we need to hit up the mall. I'm not going to the mall. Look, bitch. You can literally. I just want a fucking chocolate orange now. You know what?